What's up guys? Holly Gracie, Henry Gracie. Uh, I'm the special guest usually on these videos and uh, the time was right so here we are. In 1993 our father created the Ultimate Fighting Championship to educate the world on the importance of Jiu Jitsu. And now that every professional fighter has added it to their arsenal, we're breaking down how they're using it so you can add it to yours. Dang. UFC on Fox, Chicago, Illinois, Saturday night. Interesting party, mostly decision victories there on the main card, but the UFC on Fuel TV had some amazing fights. Reverse calf slicer. After the fights go down, we usually get a lot of requests, you know, like, yo, break this down, break that down, break this down, break that down. There was no break that down. It was just break this down. Everyone wanted to see the calf slicer. This is the first time that a reverse calf slicer has been used in MMA. Um, dang. It, it happens a lot in training. This position lands kind of a lot. Yeah. But, uh, but normally the guys in MMA are, are high level enough to not make you know, the fundamental mistake, the fundamental positional error that allowed the squeeze to be possible. It's a very hard move to catch because of what it requires from, from the, the person defending. Um, it, what it requires them to do to make possible for, uh, for you to catch it, you know? Very sneaky, let's get right to it. Charles Oliveira um, kept it so real. He started with uh, open guard, Halleck was down, Eric Wisely was down, he was of course punching here, very controlling the ankles very well from the open guard and punching. And then finally he realized that Wisely's legs were pretty savvy, so he just fell back for a very quick drop, boom, wrap on the leg. And uh, he threw the knees inward to expose the heel, right, heel hook. So the wrist scoops the heel and catches it. Standard procedure, very common. Eric's been caught a million times in heel hooks, so he knows how to defend. He started to untangle, grab my shin, Holly, untangle your leg, and he started to spin out, freeze. Anytime someone spins out of a heel hook, their knee goes from facing up, slowly keep rolling, keep putting, yeah, right there, to facing down. So it's a very common transition for the person in my position to go to the heel, try to suck the leg in, and then from here, have the knee bar, full extension here, and it's a done deal. It's not an easy catch because of how close the knee is to the groin, but normally when they spin out, you lose the knee. Almost nine times out of 10, the knee pops out during that heel hook removal. What was fascinating though here is normally in this case, how like slowly show kind of what you would do. Keep turning on your side this way and then kind of kick out. And he starts to turn, just lay down, there's no rush. My foot's, there's nothing here now. He uses other foot to pry his leg out. But notice how Halleck's body dove that way, okay? The difficulty came when when, when uh, Eric Wisely spun, and instead of going that way, he's put his foot up and started sitting back. In an attempt, possibly, like, let's let your knees slip all the way out, turn and face right here. Like, boom, start to melt the hips, into turn and face, boom. That was kind of the idea, the philosophy behind him posting his foot up. The problem was, when he posted his foot up, that put his hip within grab of Charles' left hand. So he locked it up, S grip around the hips, pulled him back, and then from here, it was bad news. Turn your angle to the camera, please. From here, it was bad news. Okay, the shin is inside the bend of the knee. The body is locking the hips. And by me locking the triangle over here and extending my legs away while pulling the hips at the same time, it basically caused excruciating pain on the muscles of the calf and the, and the, and the inner knee there. And um, very much risk. Oh, man. Very much risk for the uh, <laughs> separation of the knee. So people don't understand what causes the calf slicer to be so damaging. And uh, it, it's not only the pressure on the calf, it doesn't actually slice the muscle of the calf, although that's like a pressure point, it's very annoying. The, the other risk is that when you put something inside of a joint, when you put any block of, of mass inside of a joint like this, and then you keep compressing this, assuming that that block of mass isn't going to collapse, it's gonna stay strong, What's gonna happen is there's gonna be a break or a separation at the weakest point, which is the joint itself. The bones are very strong here. This joint, the, the, the knee joint, can be separated, right? Like, uh, imagine using a walnut cracker. You know the thing that clack. You put the walnut in, but imagine the walnut was made out of titanium. And the cracker was made out of, you know, just stainless steel. And you squeeze full bore, what's gonna break? Well, yeah, because you have a side, you have a lateral piece of basically bone. Yes. And then you have ligaments holding together two other pieces of bone. Yes. There's no way these ligaments are going to hold against this bone. You can't. You just can't. You yeah, can't. That's crazy. So that's the danger. So people didn't understand why he tapped. And man, you know what the problem was? He felt the muscle pain. Eric was intelligent enough not to wait until his knee separated to tap 
for the actual damage and the actual danger there. Show us a couple other calf slice setups. And so they see that why this is a reverse calf slicer versus a regular. Right. So if I, I can put one hook in here, spin around, and then end up here, laying back with this here, which is a very, um, I guess, just standard form of a calf slicer. But yeah, this is the same example of what Henner's talking about. My leg is in here. I have this lock up with the triangle. Now instead of my hips, I'm sorry, instead of my hands controlling the person's hips on the reverse calf slicer, my hip is now against his hip and my hands are controlling his ankle. And uh, yeah, just pulling down here and raising my hips up can be very devastating. So this um, is much easier to get because once Halleck's hips lock my hips, all he has to catch is the dangling foot. Whereas the reverse calf slicer, your hips have to trap his foot and then you gotta go get their hips with your hands. So it makes a much harder move to catch. Um, there's another setup here from the back mount. You might have standard back mount, boom. You go to modified back mount, take this hook, throw it over and lock your legs down low and set up for a potential, like this is a, where you would start to set up the twister from here. But instead from here, you I'm can start to get my back away. Starts to face. You can rock them this way and end up in the same situation where you have the lock of the triangle, the hands grabbing the foot, and then of course you can be hugging it, you can hold it, and then you're gonna drive here. One thing to watch out for on this one is uh, while you're catching the calf slicer here, they might wanna spread this leg and catch my arm right here. Take my arm. Mm. If they catch the arm here, it's a danger. So just be careful whenever you do calf slicer that this arm is gonna get taken out of the equation. And there's another risk here. Let me take a little of this. <laughs> Grab my toes over here and show them the heel hook on this one. How you pull this down over here. Oh, right here? Yeah, this is a very nasty little heel hook right there. Well, ah, okay, okay, okay. What's happening is my knee <laughs> is stuck. My leg is stuck at a certain angle. So if Holly grabs this handle right here, and look, starts twisting my foot that way, it twists my knee. So even though I have the legs locked, if you can reach around and get that, that's a major risk right there for the pull down. Yeah, very, very bad. I wonder which one would be faster, right? Because if you're trying to break my calf, that's and a good I'm point. trying to break your ankle. That's a great point. And I think which that if, if you've got a handle on my foot, I would let go. Uh, it's too much, you know what I'm saying? I think that your twist, this type of twist is more damaging than the compression yes. of the, the calf slicer There's in terms no of telling with immediate the compression, pressure, right? yeah. And this principle of these, this kind of compression locks where you're putting something in and then you're squeezing it over something else, it also exists for the bicep and for the forearm. You know, a lot of times you're playing here with the guard, you know, and uh, what you do is you can wrap one arm around, lasso it around his bicep or tricep, and if Holly tries to pass my guard right now, his arm ends up around my shin. So I shoot this hand in, I can lock hands behind his shoulder over here, okay, lock my palms together, lock the triangle, and now his arm is stuck inside my hip area. And if I push my shins away and pull the, it's done. It's compression inside the bicep. Now what's crazy is this. One time I was, I saw this move being done in a tournament somewhere, and Holly's arm, my shin is here, and it broke this, the forearm bones snapped. Interesting, right? So the elbow joint remained, the bicep remained, it's the forearm bones from this compression here. It was so much pressure going down in a way that it broke through there. And it was fascinating to see that that's where the energy was kind of released on that lockup. I think it's important to note that as a, from a defensive standpoint, right. any time you can, and somebody's going for your foot, and you yes. feel, if you can't close the distance here initially, right. You want to get away and you want to start to spin and move yourself that way. So just like you're unscrewing yourself. Right, so start going for the heel hook. Boom. So boom, boom, and boom. I'm so far south that I can't continue this. Now, from here, I'm going to try to recover something. He's using his other leg to push me away and continue his, his, uh, his southern uh, travel there. Yeah, you can see that my commitment is not to get top position at this point. That was, the, that was Eric, I think, that's what his mindset is what caused him to be available for the taking with this move. If his thought was just dive away and keep diving, there would have been no way. Let's demonstrate one time how you can't possibly get my hips if I dive away. So you have my heel hook wrapped up. So I do this, go ahead, pull the leg in. There's no way, because my hips aren't, go back to the triangle, lock your legs right there. Unless my hips are way up here, grab the hip now, then it's different. Grab my hips now, grab my hips now, grab my hips now. There's no way, and then you're kicking your out. So it's because he was thinking so much stay on top versus survival, right? You know, like when I rolled my brothers, man, you can't, you can't, you can't be greedy. Like when you get in danger, you have to give all resources to surviving that because you try to survive a little, but don't fully respect it. You're, you're asking for trouble, you know? You're very much asking for trouble. 
So I think it's more specifically with leg locks that the getting away philosophy is very helpful. Yeah, because you spin from one to the other to the third to the fourth sometimes, and uh, right, and that's absolutely right. The more you hit, the more you stick around, the more likely you are to get yeah. caught in the next little variation yeah. that might be around the corner that someone might not even be able to anticipate. So you got to get your whole leg out of the equation, my friends. So lesson learned. Uh, Eric will never get caught in that move again in his whole life. I don't think so. Ever. Man. Sometimes yeah. all it takes is one time. Go back to the <laughs> training camp, talk about it. Yeah. Forget about it. And uh, so, so he learned his lesson. And because of that happened, all of us around the world got a chance to see something and take many lessons from it. Um, we hope you guys benefited from understanding that on a deeper level. Okay? Very much. Practice it. Practice the catch. Practice the counter. And uh, man, keep it real. Now let's talk a little bit about the last Gracie giveaway. Who was it? Tap M out one is the winner for the last Gracie giveaway. Tap the question, M, not tap M. M. No, tap M, just straight up. Right. Tap M out. The question of the, of the Gracie giveaway, last Gracie Insider, Gracie Breakdown, was um, where Halleck shot his next uh, music video, what the location was, which MMA gym in California did he shoot it at? And uh, everyone gave their votes, and there was you know quite a few different votes, but there was one that was kind of the favorite. And uh, Halleck, tell us. Black House. So you guys were right. All 9,000 of you who guessed Black House, congratulations. Um, and tap him out one, also guessed Black House, so he was on the right track there. Cool guys, so we want to do another Gracie giveaway. We've got to keep going. We shouldn't stop momentum. Yeah. It's not healthy. Um, the next question is, do you train jujitsu? Yes or no? If so, where do you train? And if not, why don't you? Are we going to judge them if they don't? <sighs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to judge you at all. We're really kind of curious to know because we know that more than half of the viewers of this video don't train. Right. What do you think their reasons are? Man, it's too expensive. Uh, it's, you know, it's too sweaty. Uh, it, the mats aren't clean where I go. It What's the number like one the reason they don't room? step into a school? Fear. Yeah. Fear of the unknown. Of course. Look at what we're showing. Right. What is that? What would, I'm going to have to practice that? I mean, yes. It's That's crazy. true. It's just like, man, I'd rather be chilling. You know? Just, but you know what's crazy is you find a good school. <laughs> they're not all amazing, but you find a good one, and you practice in the same calm, controlled, respectful vibe that we're practicing now, and there's nothing to worry about. It's hard to find schools that do that, though. No. Dang, bro. <laughs> they're out there, you guys. Here's the deal. Go into a school. Hey, say, can I watch a class? And if you watch a class and after that, just watch, just can I spectate? And if after that hour you are captivated, you are 100% enthused about, when you were sitting watching, you literally in your mind were thinking, man, I could be in there right now. Right. If you feel that way while you're watching it, then ask to try a class. It's that simple. But if you're like, dang, what the heck are these guys doing? Why are they even here? And what are they practicing? Then go to a different school and I start again. And, and not only that, it's, it's almost like buying a nice car or getting a, a nice apartment, getting a good deal, right? getting the most you can for your money, uh, but also getting the car that's right for you. Um, and, and what's funny is like people will come in here and I'll tell them, go try five other schools. And if you, you know, whatever one you feel like is the best for you, do it. You know, that's what life's about. And if we happen to have something that's right for you, great. If not, well, we don't want you to be here and you not, and you feel incomplete about it. But, uh, you know, go try one school, look, watch their class, but do it with five other schools in your area and do it on Grace University, compare everything, and, and you're official. That's it, my friends. So do you train, yes or no? If so, where do you train? Where do you keep it real? And if not, why not? Answer that question, subscribe to the Gracie Breakdown channel, and favorite this video, and you're entered to win the next Gracie giveaway, which is another Pearl Weave greed. We're going, we're going back to back on the Pearl Weaves. That's crazy. We've never done this in the history of Gracie Breakdowns. But guess what? They are that nice. They're pretty nice. <laughs>